Hi Wiz Kids and happy Sunday. Welcome back to our series Vroom. I hope you're doing really good. Now I know the series has been going on for a long, 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 long time. Um, but we're coming to the end of it now. Um, and we are going to be looking at today a parable that Jesus told called the parable of the prodigal son. So before we do that, we are going to run through our memory verse um, because you should all know it now or at least know most of it. Um, so we're going to run through it with the actions. So join in and get learning. So let's get on with doing our actions. So our memory verse, as you should know, is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. Um, so let's get started and doing the actions. Let's get on with it. So love is patient. Love is kind. It does not brag. It is not proud. It is not rude. It does not look out for its own interests. It does not become easily angry. Uh, it does not keep track of other people's wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is full of joy when the truth is spoken. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. Good job, guys. I hope that you can practice that. Rewind it if you need to and get practicing so that you can remember this very long memory verse and we shall get on with today's story. So like I said before, our story today is going to be the parable of the prodigal son. So a parable is a story that Jesus told people um, that were listening to him in the Bible um, to help show what we should be like as Christians. Um, and prodigal means um, someone who spends lots and lots of money um, and lose all their wealth and all their riches uh, very extravagantly. So our story is from Luke 15 verse 11 to 32. Now that is a very 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 long bit of passage. That's even longer than the memory verse. <laughs> so I will not be reading all of it out but I will tell you the story. So uh, get yourself a notebook um, or a piece of paper and you can either write notes um, or you can draw some pictures while I tell the story. Your choice but do one of them. So pause this video now and go and get some paper and then come right back. Once again, our story is Luke 15, verse 11 to 32. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger son spoke to his father. He said, father, give my share of the, fa of the family property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the younger son packed up all he had and then he left for the country far away. There he wasted all his money on wild living. He spent everything he had. Then the whole country went into a famine, which means that they were low on food. So the son didn't have what he needed. He went to work for someone who lived in that country. That person sent the son to the fields to feed the pigs. The son wanted to fill his stomach with the food that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he began to think clearly again. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough food? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. I am no longer to be no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. While the son was still a long way off his father's house, the father saw him. He was filled with tender love for his son. He ran to him. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer to be fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. The son of mine was dead and now he is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. The older brother became angry when he saw the celebrations for his younger his younger brother so his father went out and begged him but he answered his father look all these years i've worked like a slave for you i've always obeyed your orders you never gave me even a young goat so i could celebrate with my friends but this son of yours wasted all your money and now he comes home and you will kill your fattest calf for him my son he said you are always with me everything i have is yours but we had to celebrate and be glad this brother of yours was dead and now he is alive again. Now, I just love this story that Jesus tells us because it just shows that no matter what you do, and even if you leave God and maybe ignore him for a bit and come back, 
he will always be happy to see you uh, because he loves us unconditionally, which is exactly what our memory verse says. It says that his love never fails us and also it doesn't keep track of wrongdoings, which means that even if you really mess up and do some bad things, um, God won't remember, he will forgive you and welcome you back with open arms, just like the father did to the prodigal son. The father is like God and the prodigal son can be like any of us who have maybe messed up a bit. So because of that love that never fails, it means that when we do something wrong, we don't have to be afraid that God will stop loving us. And um, so whenever you feel bad about something that you've done, you can just go freely to God because God loves you and he will forgive you and he will welcome you back with open arms, which is just amazing. So now what I want you to do is with your piece of paper that you already should have, um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I want you to think about and write down uh, what you think about them. So my first question is, how does it make you feel that God will just forgive you like that? So write how it makes you feel. Um, maybe it makes you feel relieved or happy, or maybe it makes you not very worried. You know, you feel more confident to go to God when you've done something wrong. Um, so write down what you think. So you can pause this video to write it down uh, and then play it for the next question, which is coming now. So question two, how can knowing that God forgives us because he loves us so much make a difference in your life. So what can you do because of that? Maybe you can think back to other stuff that we have learned through this series to help you answer this question. Maybe it gives you courage to talk to God more because you know that he's not going to be angry with you. Um, maybe it'll help you to be more forgiving with others and not be angry at people and hold people against what they've done in the past and just love them. So write down your answers and then we will move on to question three. And question three, what are some things you might want to ask God's forgiveness for? Now that you know that he's not going to be angry with you, maybe there's some stuff that you've been hiding from him that you can now um, tell him about and say sorry for. So have a think um, and write them down. So just to end, I am going to pray um, and maybe you can pray with the people that you have at home as well. Um, after I've prayed, which would be great, you can... Um, Ask somebody to help you maybe um, pray for forgiveness if you don't really know what to do. But it's just as easy as having a conversation with somebody. Um, but you're just having that conversation with God instead of with someone in the room with you. So let's all close our eyes and put our hands out, our hands together and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and thank you for forgiving us when we do something wrong. Thank you that when we come to you, you don't get angry, but you welcome us back with open arms and want to still have a relationship with us so i just pray for all the whiz kids and um, that they have a confidence to be able to come to you and know that you are there for them and that they will just know that your love is true and honest patient and kind and um, and that they just will always have hope if they believe in you amen so that is great that comes to the end of this series i believe um so i hope you all have an amazing week coming up and um, have fun because some holidays are nearly over now. So make sure you enjoy the rest of your time off before school starts again. And I shall see you very soon. Bye, guys.